a fun fact, um, Simon, the crazy character of the dreadlocks, was the national winner of a barbecue cooking show, like one of those cooking shows in, in Britain contests, like, uh, what was it, uh, in, like, a, like four years ago, because we went to a conference uh, in Bristol, and we just happened across this place. It was purely happenstance that Ian said, let's get a car, and we'll drive out to the countryside, and we pull around, wait a minute, I think there's a bar, we pulled into the driveway, and just found this guy, and then he just took us around everywhere, and <laughs> had multiple things cooking, and places, and yeah. that's how that yeah. came about. So no one would know to ask that question. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nor should you. Yeah. Um, so you can see it's not, it's obviously something that's still in development and um, it doesn't have some of those key parts. The big thing that we're going to be doing is the oral history interviews. That's sort of the next layer to some of this. Um, if all goes well, we'll be in Republic of Georgia in May and then in Southern Italy in July. And that's going to allow us to flesh those two pieces out. And then we're going to be able to go back and do oral history interviews and recording and translations in these other locations as well. So that just gives you a sense of the background. So any questions or comments, suggestions? <laughs> you have a barn. Keep, keep the titles on longer. That's what we learn. <laughs> yeah. When you, right. when you see them up close and you're watching them over and over again, you can read them a lot faster when they come up here. Yeah. So I have a question for Bill. Did you get the your own drone out of the deal? Uh, Ian's really the, the drone pilot <laughs> cool. in most of this. He's gotten really good at that, so um, he, he takes that up while I'm sort of running around doing yeah. some of the other things. It is, it is one of those things that drones are, um, we named our drone, we named it ND for Notre Dame. <laughs> Unfortunately, it died on a, on a Norwegian ski hill just before COVID, it committed suicide <laughs> after her gone th going through sandstorms and crashing in multiple barns in different places. It finally lost it in a ski hill. So we we realized that it wasn't actually ND as in Notre Dame. It was near death, <laughs> but it was a good drone. So one of the things that seems to be emerging just even from this little tantalizing glimpse is that you have a kind of interplay between the local story and the, the global story of agriculture and, uh, and urbanization as, uh, as, a, as a, a, a antagonistic elements of culture and history. Yeah, I mean, again, I think that was, um, that was circumstance and that we happened across Simon, and so you start getting some of these, these histories, and now it's, you know, Ian had gone about and he was visiting family in Sweden, and, you know, we get a bunch of different kinds of things just kind of showcasing what these landscapes look like, but now it's about, you know, getting up closer. And some of the other, some of the other pieces that you saw are actually, you know, um, very early on, like our first iteration of the Barn Stories class that we taught, so we just pulled a couple of pieces out of there. Um, and so a lot of this has spawned off of that. Actually, a lot of this came from work we were doing in Ireland on uh, the, the, Ireland, the um, islands off the west coast, Inishbofin and Inishark. And then that happened to, you know, how do you tell the story of, of personal story of these structures? Mm. And turned it into a class where students could then go locally and, and tell the story of these places. And so there was, you know, the one, the one guy talks a lot about construction and we just, for this piece, we just need a little bit of voice in between and, you know, need to go back and, and find, mm -hmm. I think, something a little bit more substantial. Mm -hmm. Just to wrap up to what you, what you just said, um, yeah, I, I think even the, in the next film we're going to see, it's those tensions between what is the value of the rural, what is the, the, the landscape, the place of the rural in different, in different locations. And um, how is that changing? How is it morphing? And it's, it's not always a happy story. It's, it's really not. We can sort of look at it from the standpoint of there are positive things to think about in some capacity, but there is this also this real sense of these small-scale narratives and small-scale farming that is, is disappearing on a global level. And mm -hmm. there's a lot, of, a lot of compromises involved in that. If we have a question. You have to kind of shout it out. Uh, thank you very much, Ian and, and Bill. I really do appreciate you sharing your uh, pilot film with everyone. Uh, two very quick questions, if I may. The first is when looking at uh, the 
local barns in Indiana. Did you explore any from Mennonite or Amish communities? And then the second question is, when you are looking to continue this project over the next three years, to what extent will the oral histories factor? Um, I'll deal with the first and the second one. The oral histories in many ways guide a lot of this. You won't necessarily get that feeling from this, with the exception of the interview material at the start and the end, but it really guides it as sort of the, the human story. And it's a matter of once we do those interviews, then we start thinking in terms of what are the visuals that go with that story, whether it's um, my, favorite, my favorite tractor in a barn, which is a good question to ask if you're in Indiana and want to learn about somebody's farm in some form, or that of, um, you know, sort of human experience and the kind of challenges in different ways. So, yeah, I, I'd say that oral history and those human narratives, that's the critical part that we have to sort of transpose to people. We haven't looked into the Amish community yet, I think primarily because um, when, when we're doing the, the courses, they're much farther out than we can bring everybody because we need to kind of keep it to a circle that we can bring, you know, here's five barns within a certain radius and we can get there in a certain amount of time and then we dedicate a Saturday to go there and so that would be a whole separate, I think, piece if we were going to go out to, you know, a middle barrier further out yeah. past Elkhart, things like that. Well, thanks so much for sharing your work with us and uh, it was wonderful to see it. Hope it's helpful and we'll see it again. Sounds Next good. iteration. Enjoy the film. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.